let's look at the 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 case, the the actual case that uh, Georgia has laid out against Trump. Um, this is there's 41 counts. There's 19 uh, defendants named, uh, including Trump and many of his lawyers, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, you mentioned John Eastman. Um, Act one that they zero in on here is on the fourth of November, which would be election night 2020, when Donald Trump gave a speech where they say he falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. We have a clip from that speech. Let's take a look at that clip and then talk about it in the context of this case. We won states that we weren't expected to win. Florida, we didn't win it. We won it by a lot. And It's also clear that we have won Georgia. Yeah. We, we're up by 2.5% or 117,000 votes with only 7% left. They're never going to catch us. They can't catch us. But most importantly, we're winning Pennsylvania by a tremendous yeah. amount of votes. Yeah. We're and all of a sudden, everything just stopped. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. So uh, I should also note that the the um, the Georgia case, the prosecutors allege that the speech was actually drafted four days or some version of it was drafted four days before the election. Um, I'll we'll be interested to see if they present evidence of that. But how might that speech, Ilya, particularly if there's evidence that it was drafted in advance, implicate begin to implicate Trump in criminal conspiracy? So what I would say is no one, including the prosecutors in the Georgia case, claims that merely giving that speech is illegal. This is something that is misleading in some of the criticism that is offered of the indictment, that when you have the listing of the acts, the, uh, the listing of acts is not a listing of things that the prosecutors say are by themselves illegal. Rather, that speech, which included a number of false claims that we can talk about, uh, is just part of the evidence uh, indicating uh, that Trump had a broader scheme to overturn the election result after he lost it. And indeed, one that he began to lay down even before the election. That's why it's important it was drafted ahead of time, because it's clear that he was going to claim fr fraud regardless of how and by how much he lost. Uh, and you know, there's evidence of that. But merely saying I was the victim of fraud would not have led to this indictment. Rather, the statements about being a victim of fraud, false statements, uh, were uh, part of a scheme that involved things that are actually were illegal, which is uh, trying to uh, replace the real electors with false electors, pressuring state officials into falsifying the vote counts, as in the famous uh, call with the uh, with the Secretary of State of Georgia, where he said, well, find me 11,780 votes, which has happened to be the exact number of votes that he was uh, that he needed to overcome Biden's lead uh, in Georgia. Uh, so uh, this is similar to if I merely say, you know, Bob is a scumbag and he deserves to die, that itself is perfectly legal. Uh, at least it's not a criminal violation, you know, setting aside possible claims of libel or slander. Uh, but if I then proceed uh, to tell my flunkies, you know, go out and whack Bob, uh, then the previous statement where I say that Bob deserves to die could be brought as evidence against me in court, evidence of the motive uh, uh, and plan that I had to, you know, to have Bob killed. And the same thing applies to uh, Trump's statements alleging fraud and also to Trump's plans that were clearly weighed down even before the election to allege fraud uh, in, in, in any situation where he might lose. It's worth going for a moment if we have time on what was false about Trump's statement. Uh, yeah, and that is, uh, but, but it, we, we could do that or if you'd like to move on. You know, we no, can, please do. No, lay it out yeah. for us. I think that yeah, would be so, really uh, so it is true that in some of the states that Trump ended up losing on election night, he was still leading in the count. But that was because of the so-called blue shift, uh, where because Trump 
for many months before the election had claimed that absentee voting or mail-in voting uh, was fraudulent or suspicious. Many Republicans believed what he said. And so Republicans disproportionately voted on election day, whereas Democrats, as a result, disproportionately voted by mail in the many states which permit this. And therefore, in states like Pennsylvania and some others, which first counted the in-person vote and only later counted the mail vote, initially, uh, Republicans started out with a big lead. But as these other votes, which were disproportionately Democratic, were counted, and there's nothing wrong with counting them, indeed, it would be illegal if they had not been counted and unfair as well, uh, then uh, what initially started out as a, a lead for, the Repu- for, for Trump turned into a lead for Biden. And many experts predicted ahead of time that this is what would happen, given the hesitancy of of many Republicans to uh, do mail-in voting, uh, which was a new thing in the 2020 election. Before 2020, actually, mail-in and absentee voting in many states was actually somewhat disproportionately Republican. But Trump, ironically himself, was responsible for for the trend, which led to the perception that, you know, he had a big lead, which was somehow, you know, undermined. Uh, And uh, really within hours uh, of that statement, it became very clear uh, that in in these states, uh, the eventual vote count would show uh, that Trump had pretty decisively lost. He ultimately lost Pennsylvania by doing something like close to 80 or 100,000 votes. Uh, And Mm -hmm. he lost these other states, uh, these swing states, by many thousands of votes uh, as well. Uh, and, uh, and so to so, be clear, uh, also to be clear, you know, to the extent that there were any irregularities with the ballots and the mail-in balloting, the Trump team did challenge this stuff in sure, court. And I assume we are all in agreement here that that's a totally legitimate route yes, to of course. take and has yes, been done course. before. Right. Trump and his supporters filed over 60 lawsuits uh, challenging the results in various states. That itself is perfectly legal, though I think it was somewhat abusive in a case where the overwhelming evidence was that there was no chance that the results would be overturned. But he certainly had a legal right to do that. And that wasn't a crime. Uh, And it's worth noting that Trump lost all but one of those cases. And the one he won in Pennsylvania did not come close to overturning the uh, large margin that Biden had in that state. And it's important, and this is relevant to the criminal aspect of the case, that he continued his fake elector scheme and other efforts to overturn the election, even after he lost all those cases, uh, and even after it became clear from the way those cases developed uh, that he and his supporters had no real evidence of fraud on anything like the scale necessary to change the result. Uh, it's also obviously- correct. Hold on. Get me. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. But is it also correct that some of the judges overseeing and and issuing you know rulings on those lawsuits were in fact also Trump appointed? Yes, absolutely. And like indeed, like one of the most thing, eloquent though. and powerful opinions uh, on this issue uh, was written by a Third Circuit Trump uh, appointee uh, who you know he had nominated for that position. Uh, and it's worth noting that in some of the state cases that were brought in state courts. Uh, many of those cases were also decided uh, by conservative Republican judges, uh, obviously state judges, not federal ones, and uh, conservative Republican election officials in a number of these states like Georgia also certified the results. Brad Raffensperger, the Georgia Secretary of State, uh, whom Trump tried to pressure in that famous or notorious call. He is a conservative Republican. He would have been very happy to see Trump win the state of Georgia, but he knew that simply wasn't the case given the margin of uh, over 11,000 votes and given the lack of evidence of fraud or other problems and anything like the scale that would have been necessary to overturn that margin. So it's not the case that only liberal judges heard these cases or only liberal Democratic officials were involved in certifying the results. Thanks for listening to our conversation with Ilya Soman on the Trump indictment. For more clips, go here. For full conversation, go here.